Prolonged event of that can certainly do some damage, and we are still finding some squally weather out uh, across, especially the lower keys. So still some uh, a lot of activity there as the hurricane is slowly pushing away from that region. Hurricane watches have also been established here from St. Mark's, extending all the way out to Morgan City, Louisiana. And uh, hurricane watch, a reminder for you, simply means that hurricane conditions are possible within the next 36 hours. And we certainly hope that folks watching uh, from that portion of the Gulf Coast heed those watches and uh, really get in the mindset of uh, what should I do to prepare would be a very wise thing to do at this time. Joining me now live is our meteorology supervisor, Stu Ostro, and we're going to take a look at the satellite picture. We should remind folks that uh, we're in a little lull here with the satellite as we have an eclipse going on, but what we can uh, tend to show folks here is uh, what's happening or what has happened in the past several hours. What kind of trends have we seen with George? Well, we are in an eclipse, in an eclipse, which means that the uh, sun, uh, it, well, the earth is between the sun and the satellite and it's a solar powered satellite so we're not getting any data for a couple of hours but this was not too long ago and we still see a, a well organized inner portion of the uh, hurricane the eye is maybe a little ragged but still very strong winds in here still a dangerous hurricane then we also see this squall or set of squalls extending at a pretty good distance from the center so Key West uh, has still been getting some pretty strong winds but not nearly as strong as they were earlier. All right are we anticipating some shear out here into the Gulf of Mexico? Uh, well it's tough to say there has been some in the northern Gulf of Mexico for the last couple of days what's left of that might be impinging a little bit on the storm and uh, in case of hurricanes wind shear is unfavorable for intensification the hurricane will be fighting a battle with those marginally favorable conditions but it may yet win that battle and if that was the case it would have the potential to strengthen further the water in the gulf of mexico is very warm plenty warm no doubt about that joining us live now we have matt hinken on the phone and matt is a meteorologist in biloxi mississippi at wate tv and matt i understand that you had a chance to fly out there and uh, head out there with the hurricane hunters and check things out firsthand. Yeah, that's right, Sharon. We just got on the ground, as a matter of fact, about an hour ago, and uh, it was quite an interesting flight. We had uh, we got into the eye. We flew through the eye six times, and each time we were able to see the calm waters in the Gulf, but above us we had that thin overcast. So uh, from the satellite, it doesn't appear that you can see a well-defined eye, but there is definitely one there. We were able to fly right through it several times. Matt, this is Stu Ostro. Uh, did you and the hurricane hunters notice any changes in the structure of the hurricane while you were in there, either becoming better organized or less well organized? Well, I was talking with the, the uh, weather officer there as well, and uh, he pointed out a couple times that we were able to see the, uh, the eye wall developing, but it wasn't fully uh, circulated around the hurricane. Um, and their overall impression as we got back down on the ground was that it really had not weakened, but it really had not strengthened. So as, as you've been reporting here over the last few minutes, it's pretty much held its own over the last several hours. We were up from uh, 1 o'clock this afternoon till just before uh, midnight central time. So we were up for a good you know, 10, 11 hours, and they didn't notice any, any fluctuation for the most part. Okay, and that was Matt Hinken. Uh, thank you very much for that report. He flew uh, with the Hurricane Hunters and got a chance uh, firsthand to see what was happening with Hurricane George. Matt Hinken from WATTV in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. Let's go ahead and look at the radar picture because that still tells a pretty good story. What's uh, impacting folks here into South Florida and as we head into Southwest Florida around the Naples area, even on up toward Fort Myers, still a little bit of rain. But the key point is that this is uh, moving a little bit westward now and perhaps things will get a little bit better for this area but it looks like the keys are still going to be feeling it for several hours. They will. Still some of these squalls coming up, perhaps not quite as intense as they were even a couple of hours ago, but still some wind and rain and emergency management folks are advising people who stayed behind to not be out and about. Uh, there is still the potential for a tornado or two here and there and if that were to happen, that would be perhaps out of uh, this stuff in here near the Tampa area, a couple other cells out here too. So most people won't experience anything like that, but it could be a strong wind gust or conceivably even a tornado with some of those outer cells. We haven't had any tornado warnings really for quite some time, but uh, being nighttime, it is very tough to uh, see that sort of thing uh, this time of the night. And we would certainly caution folks to uh, be aware that there is a the potential for that. Let's go ahead and talk about the path and we wanted to show you what the path has been so far and then we'll venture into the future and talk more about the projected path. Well, outside of a 
couple of wobbles in here, you could just about lay a ruler down and track it all the way across. Unfortunately, some of that was over these islands in here. And the question is, what is going to cause it to deviate from this path? And eventually, something's going to cause it to deviate. We don't think it's going to end up all the way in uh, Oregon. But the question is, when will that happen? And we think, at least in the short term, it's going to continue in this general direction. The question is, exactly what direction will it go in? Because even just a, a slight difference in the track will make all the difference in the world in terms of where it impacts. But uh, at the moment, what we can say is that anybody from Florida Panhandle to Louisiana and even Texas needs to follow the, uh, the progress of this very closely. And again, as folks can tell here, we do have it as a Category 3. So again, some intensification is a possibility and is in fact forecasted and folks should uh, plan on the possibility of a major hurricane approaching the Gulf Coast. Yes, they All should. Right. Stu Oster, thank you very much. And a reminder, too, if you'd like more information but are away from your television set, you can always reach us online any time of the day or night at weather.com. Back to the studio with Paul. All right, thanks a lot. Warnings that are in effect. Actually, the hurricane watch is in effect. And tropical storm warnings, and this is an important thing to note, uh, all the hurricane warnings that were earlier in effect across coastal areas of uh, Florida have now been downgraded to tropical storm warnings. Doesn't mean you can just let your guard down. Remember, tropical storm force winds range from anywhere from 39 to 73 miles per hour. And a prolonged event of that, as you know, can obviously do some damage. Folks around the lower keys are still experiencing some very, very very squally weather at this time. Hurricane George, and we do have hurricane watches in effect here from St. Mark's along the panhandle of Florida, just south of Tallahassee, all the way along the coast there to Morgan City, Louisiana. All right, let me go ahead and uh, show you some scenes here of folks getting prepared, and this is uh, good news to see folks taking it seriously. Plywood, as you might think, a very big seller in Pensacola, Florida, as folks prepare their homes for the possible arrival of Hurricane George. The wood, of course, is being used to cover windows and doors. Authorities expect many people to secure their homes and then move inland. And, of course, uh, you folks watching anywhere from the Florida Panhandle all the way along the Gulf Coast really need to keep on the ball for the very latest. And uh, joining me now is Stu Ostro, meteorology supervisor. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, what we've seen so far this evening. We have seen a few changes. We have. Uh, the hurricane has been plugging along toward the west-northwest. That's not really a change, but it is significant in the fact that we see no deviation from that. And we'll talk about that when we uh, talk about where it might go in the future in a couple minutes. And it's holding its own. As we look at the satellite picture, this isn't uh, really something that seems to be strengthening at this time, although some strengthening is possible. But at least uh, for the past several hours, it's just been kind of status quo. It has, but even with it not strengthening and the pressure in the middle of it is even up just a couple of millibars, which doesn't mean it's weakening either. It just means it's pretty much leveled off. We still have a very potent and dangerous hurricane, as was evidenced by what it did as it came across the Keys earlier. And as you mentioned, still some squalls out here. The uh, wind gusts in here are running about 40 miles per hour in the exposed locations, which is a far cry from over 100 miles per hour like earlier, but also a far cry from 10 or 20. So still a little rough out here this evening. Yeah, we had some reports of some uh, houseboats destroyed around the Keys and uh, obviously a lot of water damage as well. Let's go ahead and show the radar and you can see how southwest Florida is still being influenced, but the major influence is here and there are still some pretty hefty bands that are kind of circulating on eastward as uh, around the lower keys they're, they're still feeling it yeah here's the uh, center of circulation you can I suppose still call it an eye although it looks like uh, the eye wall is a little ragged but here it is it was over here earlier so it's moving in this direction uh, the winds when it's down here are offshore here so we don't have to worry about storm surge flooding as it moves by the winds turn around a little bit although if the center were to move more this way than that way that would uh, perhaps minimize the problems a little bit along the west coast of the peninsula okay we showed uh, you uh, what it looks like from a radar perspective around the keys let's show you some of the pictures from around the key west area and again uh, with that we'll be able to pinpoint uh, some of the damage that folks have seen florida keys of course taking a beating as george passed over the chain of islands earlier on friday here in key west on the extreme south 
southern tip of the Keys, extensive damage from both wind and flooding, no power in this area, and a curfew remains in effect tonight. Uh, we have word now that George has destroyed more than 20 houseboats and floating homes, lots of trees toppled on homes, so structural damage also is something that uh, by the light of day will be revealed to many folks as they slowly make their way back into uh, the lower keys. Let's talk more about the path now and uh, we alluded to a new reference point, New Orleans. Let's go to the water vapor imagery and show folks what might be happening here. We have this dip in the jet stream out here. Also we can see these clouds going up here. Uh, some heavy thunderstorms out in this part of the country this evening. Now if this steering flow in here, say a couple days from now, were to just crash on eastward and be like this, it would pick the hurricane up, it would curve and it would go over here. However, with the ridge of high pressure to the north of the storm, winds blowing counter uh, or clockwise rather in, high, in the northern hemisphere around high pressure systems, we're wondering when it might make a turn. And if it doesn't make it very soon, then it would just continue on in this direction. Thus, anybody along the coast from uh, the Florida Panhandle on certainly across Louisiana, including New Orleans and even the upper coast of Texas, needs to follow the situation very closely. And as we get into the daylight hours, we'll have a new advisory at 5 a.m. The Hurricane Center will be reevaluating all their information and make some uh, determinations based on that. And then emergency management folks will follow suit and people need to keep up with the latest. Okay. Keep it tuned here to the Weather Channel. Stu, thank you very much. A uh, reminder, too, if you happen to be away from your television set, but would like more information on the hurricane, you can reach us online at weather.com. Back to the studio now with Paul. All right, thanks a lot, Sharon. A lot of problems across the country. Well, yeah, we're dealing with a number of strong storms in many areas, including uh, potentially more in the parts of Minnesota. Bits of Iowa still under the gun as well. Of course, Hurricane Jor is still the big story, but we've got our clouds across the, the western U.S. and not much in the way of strong storm risk. That's not the case, though. Parts of Minnesota tonight still risk of severe weather lingers. And we do have still a number of severe thunderstorm watches in effect. Parts of Nebraska, South Dakota, a bit of Iowa and Minnesota, even on the bits of Wisconsin, too, for the risk of severe weather in and around these areas. A number of warnings in effect, as you can see along your screen, in these affected areas. Also, still a tornado watch uh, lingers in the parts of Florida. Not at all uncommon when a tropical system interacts with land to see uh, tornadoes as a result. So be careful for that. Look at some of these storms over to South Dakota. Look at that pretty stormy night here on right now. Moving into Minnesota, more of it. Minneapolis, we're in the clear for now. We do expect more rain to linger. Pretty stormy northeast, but we'll see yet another stormy day on the way for Saturday. A bit south of here, very wet. Parts of Iowa as well. Not as much happening tonight. Chicago land, we're looking drier, but getting a little wetter on toward Detroit. That's a look at the big picture. Of course, Hurricane George, as well as our strong storm risk, upper Midwest and northern portions of the plains. I mentioned clouds across the west that kept our temperatures down a bit in some areas of northern and central California, including a bit below average around San Francisco. The heat was on, though, in the middle of the country.
Time for Stormwatch at the Weather Channel. I'm Paul Emick. Thanks for being here. A lot of things pretty active tonight, including into Clark County, Wisconsin. A new tornado warning until 2.30 uh, local time. Your local National Weather Service Doppler radar in that region has indicated a developing tornado 30 miles east of Eau Claire, but 5 miles southwest of Longwood, moving east at 30. Again, a Doppler indicated tornado could be affecting you in Ripplinger by about... Uh, about to 15 past the hour. Again, Northern Clark County tornado warning into Wisconsin tonight. Let's begin our look at the problems across the country with Stormwatch. And this is wild. We're dealing with, uh, of course, Hurricane George along the, uh, the Gulf Coast now, south coast of Florida. We're also talking of four hurricanes, four hurricanes at one time. It's been a long time since that's happened. First things first, close to home, Hurricane George continues with uh, 105 mile per hour winds. You can look at the coordinates there. 500 miles to the southeast of New Orleans, moving west northwest at eight miles per hour. This general motion expected to continue. Some more of a northwesterly component as it starts to move, but a bit just to the west. Obviously back out in open water where it's in a spot where it may intensify a bit. There is an actual forecast from the National Hurricane Center that it may continue to at least gradually strengthen over the next 24 hours, and some models are letting intensify a little bit further as it continues to move, and the general motion expected to continue. Here's a problem. Don't worry so much about where the center of circulation is, because you're even within, like, on some of the outer reaches of this thing. You may even encounter tropical storm winds, at least in the 39 to 74 mile an hour range. You could see that, but closer to the center of circulation, that's where the winds are just a little bit stronger. Of course, expect strong gusts anywhere near this thing and hefty rain amounts. Many parts of South Florida could pick up another three to five inches of rain. The problem is tonight, still very rainy. Even Fort Myers and throughout the Keys, we're still getting dumped on here with more continuous rain coming through. Still a bit windy, but not as bad as it was earlier. You know, the close-up view showing things pretty quiet for us in Miami tonight, but along the coast, rather wet. And on toward Tampa, we've seen some showers move through with uh, more hefty rains on the way for us overnight. We're looking at a potentially wet couple of days here in the portions of Florida. Okay, that was hurricane number one. Now hurricane number two is Hurricane Carl. 85 mile per hour winds moving east northeast at 14 miles an hour, 1,460 miles west southwest of the Azores Islands. Here's where it was classified. There's its present position. It is expected to kind of continue its eastward motion and maybe around for another day or two, but again, not really expected to pose any kind of threat to the U.S. interest in the U.S. Hurricane Ivan, another hurricane, hurricane number three, moving east-northeast at 21 miles per hour, holding it pretty well. It's moving uh, 90 miles per hour, but it's expected to encounter some shear or uh, some rip. You need to have uh, anti-cyclonic flow, a lot of loft or high pressure way up there to give a system a safe environment to spin up in. This is a pretty hostile environment with the shearing taking place. That probably uh, will bring an end to that, plus the fact it's moving into much cooler water. So this may uh, continue to wind down over the next few days. Hurricane Jean, currently 85 mile per hour sustained winds, moving northwest around 10. It's been encountering a little bit of shear, but still holding together pretty well. Some uh, westerly winds here aloft are working again against any type of uh, uh, expected uh, kind of a development that kind of bringing kind of a, a problem to it, kind of trying to bring it to a halt, although it's still holding together and it may still be hurricane strength for a while. We'll continue to monitor its progress, but again, it's making more of a northerly turn too, so it doesn't appear to be any type of real problem for the other three systems there for the U.S. But Hurricane George, entirely different story. Big problems. More showers and storms on the way for Florida, further along the Gulf Coast, into the panhandle, and projected somewhere in here, Hurricane George could make another landfall. We'll continue to monitor this, plus keep looking at the storms here, especially in Minnesota and Wisconsin. But Good morning, I'm Sharon Rizalton. Welcome to this special edition of Weather Center. After Hurricane Georges has ravaged the northeastern islands of the Caribbean, on into the Keys, as we head toward the Gulf of Mexico, it continues to churn, and there is still the likelihood that it may strengthen a bit before it makes its next landfall. Let's go ahead and show you the latest coordinates as of 2 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Hurricane Georges centered at 25.2 north, 84.0 west, 
500 miles southeast of New Orleans, Louisiana. Sustained winds of 105 miles per hour is moving to the west-northwest at 8 and the central pressure at 976 millibars. Let's go ahead and look now at the hurricane watches that have been established extending from St. Mark's here around the panhandle of Florida all the way along the coast here out toward Morgan City, Louisiana. And a reminder that a hurricane watch simply means that hurricane conditions are possible possible within the next 36 hours. In the meantime, a tropical storm warning extends from Bayport, Florida, all the way back down through Key West and extending on up toward Key Largo. And many of these areas continue to receive uh, tropical storm force winds. Tropical storm force winds, a reminder, anywhere from 39 to 73 mile per hour winds. And you can imagine if you have that going for you throughout the night in a sustained pace. You can imagine that uh, folks there are really getting a battering from this particular hurricane. Let's go ahead, uh, hopefully here, and look at a satellite picture. There it is. And we'll be able to uh, pinpoint what's going on with the satellite. Now, throughout the evening, we've been watching this thing, and it's generally been uh, pretty status quo. In other words, we haven't seen any significant strengthening trend with this. It's had this sort of same classic uh, area off to the east where we have seen uh, some of these uh, higher cloud tops, uh, the higher winds, and a little bit more of that convection, whereas we have not seen it look quite as impressive on the western edge. But uh, throughout its lifespan, uh, that has kind of been the history with Georges to a certain extent. wanted to remind you, too, that a lot of times we talk about the center of circulation, and you can see it right there. And the eye is still evident at this point, but we want you to focus on also what's happening with some of these outer bands. The tropical storm force winds, for instance, extend out 175 miles generally to the east of the hurricane and hurricane force winds about 115 miles out. And I'm saying that because this is moving to the west-northwest, but even though that we're talking about where it's centered, you can imagine that folks here still along uh, the very southernmost portion of the Keys are still getting some pretty squally weather at this time. So oftentimes we tend to focus on the center of circulation, and that's important as far as tracking, and also it's important when a system makes landfall. But we want to remind you, too, that those hurricane uh, force winds, tropical storm force winds, are uh, also extending pretty far out, in this case, out across the eastern portion of the hurricane. Let's show you some scenes now, folks making some preparations. We're going to take you uh, on up toward uh, the Alabama, Gulf Shores area of Alabama. And on the coast of Alabama, residents have started planning and preparing for Hurricane George. Some say they won't leave until the hurricane is upgraded to a Category 4 storm. Alabama's state emergency management has already issued a mandatory evacuation order for Baldwin County's beaches starting on Saturday morning. All right, we'll take you back to the radar picture here, and you can see again some of the squalls. Now, you are watching, let's say, from uh, the Gulf area, maybe up around the panhandle of Florida, or maybe around uh, the Gulf Shores area, and you're wondering, do I need to worry about this sort of thing for the day on Saturday? You very well, by Saturday evening, could be receiving some tropical storm force winds. That's a possibility. But right now, the brunt of this is occurring here and really heading out toward the dry Tortugas. That's where we're seeing some of the gustiest winds at this point. Uh, folks here are actually getting more of an offshore flow, so you're not receiving any of the storm surge. There is still a possibility, maybe for some isolated tornadoes with this. We have not had anything for the past several hours, but do want to remind you that this tornado a watch remains in effect until 5 a.m. local time. Let's talk a little bit more about the track and the projected path. And again, as we head on into uh, the daytime hours on Saturday, it will become perhaps a little bit more clear what track this might be taking. A couple of things I want you to note here. First of all, anywhere along the Gulf Coast, as you can see, the scope there where this could make landfall, anywhere along the Gulf Coast there could be vulnerable. So we want to reiterate that it's very important that you tune in frequently and pay very, very close attention to any watches or warnings that might be issued during the day on Saturday. Secondly, as long as this is over the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, there is also the pro problem of intensity. We could see some strengthening here, and we've been watching for a possible Cat 3 storm, in other words, a major hurricane, as we uh, work our way into Saturday or Sunday. As far as uh, the tropical storm force winds, rem remember a reminder that we could find some trop tropical storm force winds affecting the Gulf Coast area as we work our way into uh, Saturday evening. 
Let's talk more about the path. I want to show you again the water vapor imagery and why we think that this uh, may be making perhaps a little more westward movement than we might have earlier projected. We've got a trough out here, out to the west, a rather deep trough actually across the west. Should that move on eastward, that might tend to be more of a steering mechanism and help to bring the hurricane further northward. A piece of that trough has moved on eastward, but not the entire trough. We have a very weak steering current here across the Gulf of Mexico. There is also an area of high pressure here. We have the clockwise winds coming in around the high. So there's nothing really to steer this uh, northward particularly, and it's moving in a west-northwest direction, which might put anywhere from, say, the panhandle of Florida at risk to uh, maybe even the northeast coastal areas of Texas. So anywhere within this region, we may see landfall, and that will be the thing to watch for as we continue through the day on Saturday and on into your Sunday. The moral of the story here, folks, is if you are watching from anywhere along the Gulf Coast, we encourage you to keep it tuned here for changing conditions conditions and for any additional watches and warnings that might be issued by the National Hurricane Center. Let's go ahead and show you uh, what it looked like as we uh, take you on a little history here of the hurricane in its five-day rampage through the Caribbean. Georges has been blamed for at least 300 deaths and, uh, and then produced some pretty devastating weather into portions of the Keys earlier on today. Rich Johnson takes a look back at Hurricane Georges' beginning. George. It is a hurricane that has lashed through the Caribbean. At times, a Category 3 hurricane with winds as high as 120 miles per hour. Storm surge at least 15 feet high and a swath measuring as much as 300 miles across. George pummeled the islands, leaving thousands of people in shelters and hundreds of homes lost. Damages are estimated at $2 billion. Next, the hurricane methodically marched across the island of Hispaniola, killing hundreds of people in the Dominican Republic and leaving 100,000 or more homeless. Flooding was heavy in both Santo Domingo and Haiti. Good morning. Welcome to the Saturday edition of Weather Center. I'm Rick Griffin. Well, after assaulting the northern Caribbean islands and the Florida Keys, Hurricane George continues its march through the Gulf this morning, setting its sights on a new target. We are tracking the Category 2 hurricane, and we turn to Bruce Edwards for an update. Bruce? Thank you, Rick, and good morning, everyone. We indeed watched George move away from the Florida Keys this morning out into the Gulf waters and watch for potentially its uh, next target, its next victim, and uh, whether or not it increases in strength. Here's a satellite picture, infrared colored, and as you see, over the last couple of pictures, seems to sort of fall apart a little bit, but it is still a powerful hurricane. The observations from the National Hurricane Center, as of the 2 a.m. observation, George was centered at 25.2 north, 84 degrees west, or approximately 500 miles southeast of New Orleans, Louisiana, it is still a very powerful hurricane, top sustained winds 105 miles per hour. We could see some slow strengthening over the warm waters of the Gulf Coast this morning and this afternoon. It is moving now in a west-northwesterly jog once again at about 8 miles per hour. Central pressure fairly low at 974 millibars. Now, if we still have watches, warnings posted. We still have uh, tropical storm warnings now from Key Largo on the southeast coast of Florida wrapping all the way around to western Florida up to Bayport. Those are tropical storm warnings. However, still from St. Mark's to Morgan City, Louisiana, hurricane watches remain in effect at the present time. So you want to, uh, again, be, be cautious here in this region of the country. Now, there still is a tiny sliver of a tornado watch in effect uh, right here in the southern portions of uh, Florida but that threat is diminishing as the morning wears on. Now today is going to be preparation day along the northern Gulf Coastal region. In uh, residents of the Florida Panhandle are no stranger of course to hurricanes and those with past experience started their preparations early on Friday. Many people say the hardest part is just finding supplies. Mandatory evacuations could begin as early as this morning from the very low-lying areas. Meanwhile, on the coast of Alabama, residents started planning and preparing for Hurricane George. Some say they won't leave until the hurricane is upgraded to a Category 4 storm. 
Alabama State Emergency Management has already issued a mandatory evacuation order for Baldwin County's beaches, and that begins later this morning. So indeed, we're watching this with great anticipation. As you notice, the winds, these are current wind gusts as of the last hour, as of the 3 a.m. Eastern time, they've fallen down generally below 30 miles per hour as the storm continues to pull away. Some higher gusts are being recorded, as you'll know, but the winds are beginning to die off. As we look at the field of hurricane force winds in the orange, again, in a pretty broad area, generally staying offshore and away from the Keys, occasional tropical storm gusts, but once again, these will be diminishing along the coast of Florida as uh, George continues its west-northwest trek and pulls this wind field away from the land area. We take a look now at the radar. And here it is out of Tampa Bay, and you can see the rain is just skirting the coast around Naples and Fort Myers, working up towards Sarasota and Bradenton, Florida, as it continues to rotate around. We can't even, well, you can barely discern where we have the eye, which would be right about in this area uh, here, the Circulation Center. And once again, the rain band just strafing the west coast of Florida. Still around Key West, there is some rain being uh, observed on radar. Close in on South Florida once again, and you can see Key West up to about Marathon, and then sweeping up to Naples and Fort Myers and Punta Gorda, Sarasota, Bradenton, still picking up some wet weather, but the majority is still offshore, although we cannot discount still a heavier squall running through the outer keys and over towards the dry Tortugas as this system continues to work its way on through the east. Now this uh, hurricane has been a hurricane that has refused to die. It has had a life of its own. It has uh, withstood uh, travels over many land areas, starting in Puerto Rico and uh, Hispaniola, Cuba, crossing the Keys, and it just refuses to die. Rich Johnson gives us a look at the uh, storied and uh, unfortunately deadly history of this hurricane, and its final chapter has yet to be written. George. It is a hurricane that has lashed through the Caribbean. At times, a Category 3 hurricane with winds as high as 120 miles per hour. Storm surge at least 15 feet high and a swath measuring as much as 300 miles across. George pummeled the islands, leaving thousands of people in shelters and hundreds of homes lost. Damages are estimated at $2 billion. Next, the hurricane methodically marched across the island of Hispaniola, killing hundreds of people in the Dominican Republic and leaving 100,000 or more homeless. Flooding was heavy in both Santo Domingo and Haiti. As much as 90% of the food crops in both countries are destroyed, damage estimates are in the millions. On Wednesday night, Georges entered Cuba where 200,000 people evacuated their homes. To date, about 20,000 homes are flooded. Damage to crops, roads, and bridges is extensive. Georges then exited the island of Cuba to continue its slow and steady trek toward the Florida Keys, a consistently plodding, powerful, and still potentially dangerous hurricane. For the Weather Channel, I'm Rich Johnson. Thank you, Rich. Well, now where is George going to be headed? It's uh, moving on into the open Gulf waters, and the strike probability calls for the highest probability in the red from the uh, mouth of the Mississippi back over to near Pensacola, Florida in this area. Of course, there's a wide swath and there's still uh, many a chapter to be written yet. We'll be watching this very carefully uh, for potential uh, uh, path uh, hints as to where exactly it's going to be headed and we'll keep you updated throughout the course of the day. We'll have updates all day long. By the way, if you step away from your TV, weather.com on the internet will put you in touch with the latest weather information. Now, let's take a look at the rest of the nation's weather on this Saturday and here with the details in the studio, Rick Griffin. Thanks a lot, Bruce. Let's check on the satellite picture and uh, outside George and some heavy weather over the northern plains and upper Great Lakes as well as the west. A lot of fair weather to talk about from the four corners through Texas into Tennessee, the Carolinas, Virginia, and the Northeast. Uh, surface map shows high pressure from the southern part of the Lone Star State through the Mid-Atlantic region covering New York City and Boston, where a nice start to the weekend is anticipated. However, a warm front, cold front, low pressure combination from Minnesota and Wisconsin west means some heavy weather this morning in terms of uh, heavy duty showers and storms and just recently as a matter of fact some severe thunderstorm activity in the state of Wisconsin. Meantime, for those of you in the Northeast, fair cool conditions. Caribou's 47, 
53 in Burlington, mid 60s in Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. Slightly cooler in Elkins and uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, slightly warmer at 70 degrees. Miami, a toasty 83. While it's a dry and cool 67 in Atlanta, 79 in Dallas, 75 degrees in Houston. High pressure covers the southern states. We have George and